Procedural animation is used to automatically generate real-time animation with far more diverse actions than predefined animation. Not only does this save time and resources, but looks vastly more dynamic when set up correctly. You have probably seen this used in some way or form in many games you play, common uses being legs adjusting to uneven terrain, heads turning to look at the player, grabbing objects, or ragdolls just to name a few. This is often done using a technique called IK, inverse kinematics, which uses equations to determine the motion needed to reach a desired position. A simple way to visualize this is placing your hand in front of yourself and then pulling that hand. You can feel how your forearm pulls forward with it, and the connection from your elbow then pulls your upper arm. Most of these setups have two main points, a leader and a target goal. If you reach for a cup, that is your target, and your hand is the lead bone. You can set bend limitations and have bones down the chain be less affected to change the feel and result. This can even be blended in with pre-made animations to give visual feedback in life. A great example of this is in Uncharted where when moving left and right in a vehicle, the characters sway with the physics, with their seat and hands pinned while the rest simulates. When applying this to procedurally animated walking, I think these 10 steps from Kodir show it quite well. Firstly, use inverse kinematics to control the leg. I suggest using a solver setup built into the engine, or an available asset, as there are lots of IK tools available. Glue the foot to the ground, and then make a target point attached to the body. Break S down from the target point, and move it up or down to the hit location. And then check your distance from the foot to the target point. When this distance passes a threshold, move the leg towards the target point. Depending on the walking pattern, you can define left and right legs and have them walk in opposite motion by only moving the leg when the opposite leg is grounded. To adjust the body, use the average leg position plus offset, and then rotate the body based on the difference between the left and right leg height. While these are just the basic steps, you can add a lot of extra features and conditions where these rules change to make the walk more unique. Changing the step duration, how high the leg is raised, ungluing on angle thresholds, and regions around the foot prohibiting other feet from stepping inside can all greatly change the feeling and look. While the creature can now procedurally move its legs, it still needs to know how to actually move. Most pathfinding solutions require you to bake a nav mesh or some sort of environmental setup, but I wanted one where the enemy could be dropped in any scene and just work. I ended up using a similar setup to an artificial simulation movement behavior called Boids, meaning birdoid, aka bird-like objects. Normally Boids are used for large groups of flocking birds, fish, or other animals and follow three basic rules. Separation, steering to avoid crowding local flock mates. Alignment, steer towards the average heading of local flock mates. And Cohesion, steer to move towards the average position of local flock mates. Instead of following a flock, the enemy will acquire the player as its target by grabbing the player tagged object. If within engagement distance, it will pursue the player and begin the void like detection. This will shoot out a ray or sphere cast, and depending on the enemy type, this can be set to vision cones or extra dimensions. For example, a grounded enemy may only need one detection plane, whereas a flying one would need to detect up and down as well. These ray casts will check for objects in the way between them and the player and if hit, will steer around them to take the path of least resistance. If the view from the enemy to the target gets obstructed, it can also strafe or turn to avoid getting stuck. So far this method has worked quite well, it can work in large groups of enemies with more actions and strategy planned for the future. Similar to the leg setup, the rest of the creature uses the same principles. The head will turn to look at the target, and often this extends down to the spine and chest slightly. If the enemy is a turret, this may be the only procedural animation it needs. The same method can also be used for aiming ranged weapons or limb attacks that hone in on the player, similar to the previous example of a hand reaching for a cut. This can also add life in having the spine turn with rotation or tail and tentacle bone chains flicking about in a curved sine wave. Bones can also be simulated with the jiggle on hit and even impulse the enemy back where all these modular systems will work together to make a fluid knockback recovery. For biological creature attacks and other large impactful poses, these are the times where pre-made animation do seem like a better choice. However, procedural methods can blend in with the attack and provide simulated follow-through information. Other follow-through information are things like cloth, fur, hair, skin, or ooze that is done with a cloth sim deforming the mesh. 
These usually don't need extra independent logic beyond their initial setup, and can help tremendously with the visual fidelity. Not only do these apply to creatures, but they have also helped with humanoid animations. I've used it to bypass strafing animations, idle turning, and even allow dynamic movement on certain attacks. I've also begun experiments with fully procedural humanoid enemies, but will probably use it for more ghoulish entities, as combining a shambling walk with active ragdoll has an eerie look to it. This is also something that can be applied more to the player and enemies, where ragdolls can be blended in with collision hits to add recovery that syncs well with the environment and force. I think this will be particularly useful for the player when grappling at high speeds into a surface. Not only does this affect how visuals look, but gameplay can also adapt to this flexibility. Destroyed legs can have a creature change its walk or stance to compensate for the missing limb, or dynamically guard a vulnerable area. While a lot of the groundwork for these have been made, I think its true potential will be seen more after the combat focus, as the systems will complement each other greatly. I hope you enjoyed this little taste for what is in store, and I'm super excited to develop the system further. I believe when done right, procedural animation can unlock a new dimension of visual fidelity that may even raise the bar beyond quality AAA animation. If you use Unity, I strongly suggest checking out Final IK, Magicka Cloth, and F Impossible Creations plugins. They have tons of solvers that help a lot with the procedural process. Thank you for watching, and please remember to like, subscribe, wishlist Wither Sworn on Steam, or follow along on Twitter or Discord for more frequent updates. See you next time.